Pebbles. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Making Everyday Magic. I am Shauna. In case you are new here, this is our fourth year of homeschooling and we are talking about our next year of homeschooling, our fifth year. We will have a kindergartner and a fourth grader. Now, I am, if you guys have been around for a little while, you know that I am planning to do two histories next year. One will be a Studies Weekly program for our big girl, focused for our big girl, but with both kiddos. I am going to be talking about what I am planning to do for our little one. Uh, we will be doing a uh, history quest early times. Now, I just wanted to break this down for you because I've had a lot of requests for this video. So we are going to be doing a little bit of compare and contrast for the curriculums of History Quest and Story of the World. So let's chat it up. Before we go any further, guys, please scroll down, hit that big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. Okay. History videos tend to be like my most popular videos. And this has been hugely requested. So here's what we're going to talk about. We currently use or actually just finished to be technical. We use Story of the World. We used it this year and we used it last year. I do not have experience with their very first volume. I've used volume two and volume three because Texas history is traditionally taught in fourth grade here in Texas. My plan was just to do that for next year. But being that I do have little sister coming in as well, I know that I needed something for her. Now in our home, I enjoy teaching history as a family subject because we tend to do it at kind of weird times and or go visit something that's applicable. So I just feel like it's one of those things that is best kind of communally taught family-wide. Uh, so that is the way that we have used it. Now, our first year of using the Timber Doodle kits, which as always will be linked below, we got Story of the World Volume 2. And because I did not know any way in which the world focused or any way in which this went, I got the, uh, the entire set. And the set comes with uh, the audiobook, which we'll talk about in a minute. The textbook and the activity book. Well, after using this the first year, I realized what I did and I did not like. I love, love an audiobook. Love it. I like to listen to it. We can do it in the car. We can do it at the breakfast table. We can do it whatever. And then with the audiobook, she can read along. And I feel like that kind of reinforces that. Now, our first year, I started out trying to do all of this. You see this? You see this insanity? I very quickly abandoned this book to the point that I omitted it from our third grade kit when I was purchasing the very next year because I don't like this. I do not like it. It is, it is overwhelming, not only the amount of information, which it's great, right? Like it's good to have a lot of information. Just the way in which it is jam packed into this thing, it is too much. There are follow-up and review questions, but quite possibly almost more than there is, there are, there are almost more follow-up questions than there are possible answers in the book. There are so many. There are craft projects. There are just this one chapter, for example, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine options for additional reading. There's craft projects, cooking projects, more craft projects. Oh, hey, look, more craft projects. Craft projects, cooking projects, game activity. And then there are maps, coloring pages, and additional things you can do. This is too much. This is too much. I know me. Yeah, I, there was no sense in me paying for this book. It was not coming out. It was not getting used. So my honest opinion on this is that go into it. And part of it was that I was not as experienced as I am now. And I spent money on it, which makes it very hard for me to not want to do all the things because I spent money on it. That makes it really hard to quit. Uh, knowing what I know now and approaching things differently, I still wouldn't do this. Um, I would pick and choose one, maybe two things, but then I feel like it's such a waste. So that's a struggle for me. I don't love it. Something else that I don't love about Story of the World is that for whatever reason, there's like 40 something chapters. So you're expected to do like one and a half chapters on a traditional 36 week school year. 
And I just, yeah, this one has 42. I think the one we did this year has 42 as well. Why? Why is that? I mean, I understand that they have obviously plenty of stuff to fill the book with. It's just a weird number to me. It kind of bothers me. I do like, and I this is the same way as well with History Quest. So they both are me. They give you lots of information. I like that both of them are written like in a narrative style. So this one is you're flying your magic carpet all over the world and it's taking you to all these places and you're learning about them as you go there. And this one, I think you do like a, you know, like a time traveler or history hop and you go and you learn about those things. And so I like that because I do feel like that versus just literally spewing facts at children gives them a little bit more um, understanding and things like that. Now, why I have decided that we are not doing history of the world. There is a lot of debate over whether it is secular, non-secular, neutral, whatever. I think most of that comes from volume one, which I just don't have experience with. Um, and I've hashed over this like 10 million times. If you want to see anything right up there, I, yeah, I'm just not worth talking about again. So abandoning this. And so in my large amount of research as far as what I wanted to use. Oh, you know what? Let me flip this open for you. So I like that there's a physical CD. This is just a little kind of dull and boring. It's just, it, it's just, it's information. And that's exactly what it is. Um, this, even just the cover of this looks a little bit more fun. So I like that the book is bigger, but the print is a little bit bigger. So I feel like that helps a great deal. So this has a wonderful 26 chapters. Now, the way that they want you to do this, okay, so this is just a little bit nicer to look at. This, the, every chapter is broken down with like the chapter, the information, and then a history hop, which is a little time travel guide, whereas almost every chapter of Story of the World is also broken down into two. One gives you the information, and then the second one gives you a little bit more about a piece of what they talked about, a little bit more information, which I also like. This one is just easier to visually accept, I think. And again, it is prettier on the outside. It has a nice look. It does also have a study guide. If I'm not mistaken, I think this one may be cheaper as well. I can look, I can check. I'll give you the, you know what? I'll give you some links down below, friends. Uh, this is also a little bit nicer. This is much smaller than the one for Story of the World, whereas the actual textbook is bigger, but look at that. It's like half, it's like half. And if that's not enough, it's also, if that's not enough, it's also just less intimidating for mommy on the inside. Let me set this one down. Okay, so this is the activity portion and it has color, which is so nice. Uh, it has it broken down into the chapters and it tells you how to use it. Now, one of the things that History Quest does is that they incorporate four weeks. So there are 26 actual chapters and then there are four weeks spursed out and they tell you when to do them of Hugga style history. Hugga Higgy. I'm never gonna get this right. It's whatever it is, H H Y G G E, something like that. Uh, I'm never gonna say the word right, I'm just not. I try and I struggle, but I can't. And what that is, is basically they have some recommended reading that you do on those weeks. And then you go and you just sit down and you just read and you learn that way. Um, on the couch with a blanket, nice, comfortable, approachable. And I like that it's a 30 week plan and not 42 lessons because I don't know where that came from. One of the other things that I like, there's a master supply list. So if you have this, you could do all the crafts in the book versus every craft in the book needing a random different thing, which is overwhelming. And again, I straight up quit using that thing. I like that there's color. Another thing that I very much like is that there is a schedule to tell me what to do and when to do it. I do not know that I will follow that schedule. Uh, just kind of like with everything else I do, I'm gonna take the recommendation and then I'm gonna tweak it to how it works best for me. And I recommend you do the same all the time. We've had this discussion many, many times. Curriculum is a tool. It is not something to weigh you down. It is a teacher's guide, not a teacher's must do this, okay? So keep that in mind every single time. And while there are many additional recommended readings that you could do. The only thing supplemental that you need for this is this book, the Esborn Encyclopedia of World History with internet links. And I'll link this down below as well. 
Now, I would, never would have bought this book on my own. However, I'm really glad now that we have it because look at this. It covers everything and it's pretty and it's glossy. And if anything, this is this is, is worth knowing about in its own and it's fantastic. And I know that my kids are going to appreciate looking at it and reading it and referencing it. And it makes the other stuff prettier because again, it's glossy and it's colorful and it's nice. So I have not, full disclosure, have not started using History Quest yet. One of the downsides, and I talked about this before and I'm so sorry. I understand that I am an old woman who lives in the Stone Age. I am accepting that. I am putting this little disclaimer out. I'm an old woman who lives in the Stone Age. So I understand that by not having a physical CD and instead having a digital download, I will be open to being able to use it in more places. But I want the option of buying the CD, which I don't have. Uh, but I have the digital downloads and I'll be able to use them in more places. And I'm just gonna deep breathe right through that. But I would like a, the option to buy the physical CDs because that's what I like because I'm an old lady and I like a product. I like a thing, okay? This whole entirely digital thing, I don't know if I'm fully on board with. But that, as of now, is my only complaint. I'm super excited to get into it. And of course, as always, guys, I will keep you posted every step of the way. This is just first impressions. First impressions, just looking at the two, Again, I have used Story of the World and quit using it, okay? Because I do feel, and, and do I like the information? Yes, do I have any complaints with the information? I personally don't have any complaints with the information, but it was not awesome enough for me to keep doing it, if that makes sense. It was not perfect enough. It wasn't the best enough fit that I went and searched out something else. So that should tell you absolutely everything that you need to know. By all means, always make your own decisions and opinions. This is just what I know for us. Uh, we needed some change in that department. I want history to be a bit more exciting than that because if we're being honest, history was definitely a bit more exciting than that, right? Uh, guys, I hope that this flip through helps you make any of your curriculum decisions for the coming for the 2021-2022 school year. If you have any questions at all, someone here, myself included, can answer them. Just, uh, if we can, we will answer them. Let me start. I'm not gonna answer questions I can't answer. Someone here can definitely help, probably, almost certainly. Uh, I hope that you found any of this helpful, entertaining, or informative. If you did, please scroll down, give this video a thumbs up, hit that big red subscribe button for those of you who have stayed through to the end. Yeah, I'm an old lady. If I spend money, I want a physical product. I don't want to buy my clothes online. If there's a lot of, I have to adjust to the new world. It's a little crazy. It's a little scary, but it's okay, right? Is it okay? I don't know. I'll suffer through it. Anybody else like me, old lady? I can't let go of some things. I can't get on board with a lot of apps and things. I don't know a lot of the functions that even my car does. And I've had that for like five years. I just, I do what I need to do with the things I need to do. And then I don't do anything else extra because 